happy first Sunday of Advent all to everyone. As you can see, the color over here has changed. We now have the color for Advent, the violet. We also have the purple candle. Um, here are the four candles on the Advent wreath. The first Sunday of Advent um, reminds us of hope, that Jesus will be the light in the darkness and the hope of the expectation of the coming of Christ. So that's um, why we have the Advent wreath up now. So who are some of the people you think of when we talk about the Christmas story in the church? We, of course, think of Mary, Jesus's mother, and his earthly father, Joseph, her cousin, Elizabeth, Zachariah, John the Baptist, angels, and of course, Jesus. In the coming weeks, as we listen to the stories announcing the soon-to-be birth of Jesus, I want you to imagine that you are a part of the story. So in today's reading, the disciples asked Jesus when he would come back again in glory. Jesus told them that no one would ever know that, but when that they should always be ready and watching. So let's listen to the gospel. And while you listen, imagine you are there listening to Jesus with all of his other followers, with all of his other disciples. So a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. May Christ's words be on my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. Jesus said to his disciples, Stay awake. Always be ready. You do not know on what day your Lord is coming. You know for sure that if the owners of a house knew at what time of night a thief was coming, they would stay awake and wouldn't let the thief break in. And in the same way, you must always be ready because you do not know the time when the Lord is coming. The gospel of the Lord. And we all say, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So what example did Jesus use to tell you and the rest of the disciples to always be ready? He used the example of a thief in the night. So even today, some people ask, when will Jesus come back again in glory? And Jesus's answer is, you must always be ready, just like it says here in this reading. Now let's suppose for a second that you are Jesus and people ask you, what do we do to be ready? What do you want us to be doing when you come back? Or how would you answer them? So if you were speaking as Jesus, we might say something like, being ready means living a good Christian life. So, you know, you don't need to do anything extraordinary to be prepared for Jesus. Being ready means we are doing the things we do every day well and for God's glory. And the things we need to be doing well are like, loving those around us, helping around at home, being honest, studying for school, being fair in games, all those things we already do every day and we just need to do them well for God. That is how we become ready for Christ. So let's take a moment and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And the response will be, <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, we pray for Pope Francis and for all members of our church that we may experience a renewed sense of hope as we seek to follow Christ more closely this Advent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Advent, we pray that as we listen to the readings during the season of Advent, our minds and hearts will be touched by Christ's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our preparation for Christmas will radiate peace and prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's finish with our Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And remember that we're still in person, 9 a.m. Mass, every Sunday. Hope to see you there soon. God bless.